Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. The glory of God is a human being fully alive. This phrase was coined by St. Irenaeus in the second century. Perhaps Irenaeus had seen people who were so full of God's life that the only word he could think of was glory. Maybe Irenaeus even had moments in his own life, those kind of real peak moments of God's experience when he thought to himself, this is what it feels like to be fully alive. And all he could say was glory. And I wonder if you've had the experience of somebody who's fully alive or a time when you were fully alive as well. Certainly Peter and the disciples who followed Jesus up the mountain on that transformation day were baffled by it a little bit. They went to the top of the mountain and they were with Jesus and suddenly he was surrounded by the divine presence, a presence they couldn't even really describe. And they didn't know what to do about all of that. And so continued to be baffled even as they came down the mountain. They didn't know what all that meant, but we, we have a hunch, don't we? We have a hunch because the very first story in the Bible tells us that the first human beings were created in the image of God, male and female. We have a hunch that because in the resurrection, Jesus revealed that God's life overcomes death. We have a hunch because, you know, a hundred days after today, we'll celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit will actually come and infuse people with God's life. And the disciples didn't have that. But all of these remind us that God's divine image is present in us and has been in all humanity from the beginning. And that the gift of the Holy Spirit is just hovering, just waiting to enliven God's people. Of course, Irenaeus would have been aware of people in his own life. People who had failed to see the image of God, either in others or in themselves. People who had lost that liveliness. He might see people like you and I do, people who got up in the morning and had breakfast and went to work and came home from work and watched, well, maybe he didn't know people that came home and watched TV, but watched TV and then just got up the next day to do it all over again. So he was preaching to people. He was saying, this is, what, this is what you could have. Open your hearts and stoles to the divine image in you. Breathe in the spirit of life, he would pray, not just to live, but to be fully alive. There's a reason this story of transformation is always told on this Sunday. First, of course, it's the last Sunday of the Epiphany season, when Jesus, in so many different ways, is revealed as having the divine presence with him. And it's also the Sunday just before Lent. And it's at the beginning of Lent that this story serves as kind of a mission statement for what Lent is supposed to be about. We're given a map for where we're headed. We're headed to the fullness of life. So if you were to imagine a person fully alive, what would you imagine? 
modern culture tries to tell us pictures of full aliveness. Maybe it's a person jumping out of a plane with a parachute to have that kind of peak experience. Or maybe it's just the, the idea of a cushy retirement. But in a Christian sense, what would you imagine? Of course, there wouldn't just be one imagining. Fullness of life looks different in your life than it looks in somebody else's life. There are as many expressions of the fullness of life as there are people. N.T. Wright, the theologian, reminds us that actually our whole Christian vocation is to bear the image of God so that every Christian would do that. In our own church, each Sunday we pray that we might be transformed in Jesus' love. So what would it look like in your life to be fully transformed? Or what would it look in your life to, to bear the image of Christ more and more? Can you imagine it? Can you imagine the glory of being fully alive and what that would actually look like? Let me offer three characteristics that are about full aliveness, three Christian characteristics to be full of life. And you know them, they're no secret. Faith and hope and love. Faith is that trust that God is working in the world and in us for the sake of life. We do not confuse God with Santa. We do not imagine God up in heaven making a list of who's naughty and who's nice. No, instead, we remember the God who hovers over the waters to bring life out of chaos. We remember the God who breathes life into those first people, so the story goes. But the point is to bring divine life out of this simple clay. We trust that God is at work and it allows us to be free from the anxiety that we somehow have to be in control. We somehow have to make it all right. Which leads us to the second practice of full aliveness, which is hope. Hope. Hope is that uh, faith, right, that God is working. To be fully alive in hope is to know that God is working to bring everything to their fullness. Like Julian of Norwich, who said, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Or as somebody more put it in a more modern sense, you know, everything will turn out all right in the end. And if it's not all right, it's not the end. For the Christian, this just recognizes that the very nature of our God is to bring life out of things that seem or are dead. The third practice is love. Love, of course. Love is about that kind of freedom that comes with giving one's self away. Love sets in motion a kind of mutual sharing that enlivens both the giver and the receiver. Love recognizes that human beings are all have that chance to be fully alive and that God's ultimate glory comes when all human beings together, in the end, are fully alive. And so that's where we're headed as we move toward Lent and toward Easter and toward Pentecost and the giving of the Spirit. It's all about human beings and humanity being fully alive, you and me fully alive. So between now and Ash Wednesday, I would invite that to be our meditation about the glory of God and about what that promise of being fully alive would look like for you and for me 
and for our world. Because even though it's not the end, even though everything is not all right right now, we can still move with God to that full aliveness as we move forward in love.